Greetings. We welcome you on this Sunday morning to Burnt Hills United Methodist Church and our online worship. We're happy that you've chosen to spend your time with us this morning. We want to remind everyone, too, that in addition to this online service, we also have live service at the church, and this week we begin with two of them, one at 9 and then one at 1030. We also want to let you know that our reopening team met this week, and with all the changes in COVID numbers, the changes in school systems, we've decided that for this, starting this week, wearing your mask will be optional when you're in the building. We are going to request that folks still bring their mask if they'd like to sing along during live worship service. And we also ask that you be respectful of others. If you may be ready to take your mask off, someone else may not. And we just ask that we keep distance and space and respect each other. Uh, another announcement for this morning, our Lenten study begins on Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock. We're doing a book that's looking at the Sermon on the Mount. And you can get the book and the link to the Zoom by contacting the church office. With that, let us bring ourselves into an attitude of worship. I want to begin this morning by asking us all to continue to pray for the people of Ukraine, for safety and peace, and to pray for the soldiers, even the Russian ones, whose lives are endangered by the orders they have been given. May their hearts be filled with truth and their actions turn to peace rather than war. We also want to pray for those who are in power, those who have the ability to call off the, the attacks and the devastation. Let us pray that God's wisdom and compassion will fill them and that they decide to do what is needed to end this aggression before any more harm is done. And let us now turn to worship with these words. We come to worship the God that walks with us through every challenge. We come to remember what Jesus did when faced with temptation in the wilderness. We come into your presence, Holy One, as your children gathered here and elsewhere to worship, to be in fellowship, and to praise you. Your spirit exists wherever we may be. We come seeking to be with you now, loving God. We come into your presence full of our own failings, thoughts, and desires, often losing track of your desire for our world. We come seeking forgiveness when we give in to temptation. We come today remembering the sacrifice of Jesus, who gave his life so that we might find ours. We come today to worship our God, who gives us strength for every journey and courage for every test. We come in praise and thanksgiving, asking that your spirit remain with us always. Amen. And I invite you now to join in our first hymn this morning, Lord, who throughout these 40 days. Thank you. 
Our scripture reading this morning takes us back in the book of Luke to chapter 4. We're going to read the first of the 12 verses in a section known as the temptation of Christ. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, to protect you, and on their hands will they bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. We give thanks for these words from Scripture and pray that our hearts are open to hearing a meaning in them. And now let us prepare for young disciples' time as we hear Jesus Loves Me. to your young disciples out there. I hope you're all having a good day. Enjoy being back to school the last week. This morning I want to talk to you a little bit about that reading that we heard, um, where Jesus is taken into the wilderness. And I wonder if you know what wilderness means. Um, it's a place that's kind of out in the wild. It's not in your house. It's not a place where there are stores to get food. It's just kind of wild land. Um, and sometimes we might choose to travel through the wilderness. And a lot of times we avoid it because if you go there and you're not ready, it can be very difficult. Now, there's a sign that was up during Jesus Loves Me and I'm gonna show it to you again here. And I wonder if you can see what it says on that sign. It says, due to floods and quicksand, take the upper trail. I took that picture of that sign when I was out in the wilderness. Years ago, I went into the desert southwest areas. And I came across this sign, and at first it made me laugh. I didn't think there's no flood today. 
It's not rainy, it's a beautiful day. And then I thought, well, there's, how could there be quicksand out here? But I listened to it. I took the other trail because it seemed important that somebody had put that there for some reason to help us, whoever was hiking in that area, make a choice that would be important for their life. And I followed that upper trail and everything was fine. I got to the destination we were going to and on the way back I didn't see the sign so I took the lower trail and I found the quicksand. Um, that's one of those things about the wilderness. You always have to be on the lookout. You have to be ready to make choices and to think things through. In today's story, Jesus is in the wilderness. Oh, by the way, I got out of the quicksand because I'm here. But in today's story, Jesus goes through the wilderness and he's there for 40 days. Think about that. That's more than a month. And he's all by himself. And just to survive out there is a sign that Jesus is something special. And throughout that time, he had to make choices in order to survive. Choices about when to be out in the sun and when not where to look for food or water, all of which are hard to find in the desert. And in the story, we hear that he didn't find much food. He was really hungry or famished, as it said. And then the devil comes along and presents Jesus with some choices to make. And he made the right ones, thankfully, because he understood his relationship with God. The devil would say, I ask you to do this thing because you'll be fine. And Jesus would respond, but it is written, meaning it's down in scripture or for you it would be in the Bible, not to test God, to worship only God. Sometimes making choices is, easy, is easier if you have something to believe in that helps guide your choices. Hopefully for you, you never have a choice like take the quicksand or go the other way. And I hope you never have a choice to pick something from the devil or evil over something good. The choices in your life will hopefully be much easier, simpler, smaller things. But if you always have faith in your teachings here from church, they can help you make the right choices whenever you do have one. Choose to show love rather than anger. Choose to share what you have rather than to keep it for yourself and turn your back on others. Those are things that we hope you learn here so that as you grow up and go into the world, you can make the choices that show God's love. Amen. So let us say a quick prayer this morning. Loving God, we give you thanks for Jesus and all he teaches. We give you thanks for your, your love. And we give you thanks for the lessons that can guide our choices in our life. Amen. And so now, as we think about choices and Jesus in the wilderness, I invite you to sing along with us to Jesus Walked This Lonesome Valley.
Today, we continue our journey through Luke as we enter this season of Lent. And we're going to do it by going a little bit earlier in his ministry than where we have gotten up to in the last weeks. So today, we pick up the story following his baptism in the Jordan River and that voice that had come down from heaven declaring, You are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And now the Holy Spirit leads Jesus into the wilderness where he is tempted. These twin concepts of temptation and time spent in the wilderness both present us with challenges for our lives to consider during this season of Lent. These concepts are so central to Jesus' message that we actually encounter this story in several of the Gospels. Each one of them tells it a little bit differently, but each of them has it, which tells us that it's important. It's really important. In Mark's version, Jesus was driven into the wilderness by the Spirit, where the temptations take place. When you read Matthew, he tells it that Jesus is driven into the wilderness specifically to be tempted. And in Luke's version, Jesus is led, not driven, into the wilderness. And though we are not told that it was to be tempted, we are told that he was for 40 days. We get specifics on three of them, but we're told he was tempted for 40 days. In all three versions, he comes face to face with temptation as he experiences time in the wilderness. So what is wilderness and why is it important in our understanding of this story and Jesus? Well, I always like to go for definitions. So I went to Webster's to look it up. And it gives several definitions of wilderness. The first two are very similar. And you take them together, they're pretty straightforward. It might be what you immediately think of when you read this passage. The wilderness is a tract or region of uncultivated and uninhabited by human beings. Or, the second definition, an area undisturbed by human activity. Those seem pretty straightforward. But there's a third definition that might actually be more important to our understanding of this passage. That third definition is that the wilderness is a confusing multitude or mass 
a bewildering situation. These seem to apply as well to this reading. On one hand, thinking of Jesus in the wilderness brings us images of him needing to struggle to survive, having no contact with others, no food, seeking to live off the land. There's no shelter, no protection or safe haven for rest. They go with those first two definitions of the wilderness. And that all makes sense. But we should not lose sight of the emotional and spiritual wilderness that Jesus was also experiencing at that time. It was likely a time of confusion and seeking to understand all that had just happened to him when he was baptized and to grasp what might lie ahead for his life after hearing the voice from heaven say, you are God's son and he is pleased with you. Remember, this is the next story. He had just been baptized and then he was out into the wilderness. Whatever he may have known his life to be before that day, whatever plans he may have had, whatever questions about his life, whatever understanding of his place in society and in the world, it probably all changed in those events around his baptism. In those days in the wilderness, I suspect that Jesus was wrestling with comprehending it all and with figuring out how he should proceed. He was likely in a time of confusion and bewilderment as he sought to discern what it all meant, how he prayed for guidance on how to proceed and to carry out God's call on his life. Now we are told throughout scriptures that Jesus always took time away to pray. And I suspect that those prayers often consisted of continuing to seek that same kind of guidance, how to proceed even after the overall path was clear. In reading about his time in the wilderness, we can find comfort that when we face our own wilderness times, we are not alone. And we can know that God can help us find our way. So what about that second concept, temptation? Well, when Jesus was alone in the wilderness, he finds himself facing options of taking an easy path as he is tempted with food and power and glory. But he resists. Each of us has likely faced some temptation in our life in some way, an opportunity offered or something that just becomes available to gain something of benefit for us through a path that might challenge who we are. Instead of allowing his time in the confusion of the wilderness and those temptations to ruin him or to define him as someone willing to take the cheap and easy way, Jesus used those trials to be a positive and life-changing force in his life. Let us pray that we can do that as well. In facing and resisting those temptations, Jesus defined who he would be for the rest of his life. Let us pray that we can do that as well. In a way, these temptations and Jesus' response to them define his way out of the wilderness of uncertainty and confusion, which he likely found himself in. With his path set, Jesus walked out of the wilderness a changed and more confident person, prepared to embark on his journey that would change the world and give us new examples of God's plan for us to live into the kingdom of God. A reality where we recognize that all humanity is one family, all beloved by God. That's such good news. But it was something new at the time. 
clearly this passage is important in our understanding of Christ and his journey, but is also relevant to us today and our own journeys through life. Some of the greatest temptations that continue to face humankind are those of profit or power, of seeking a life of comfort, no matter how attaining that comfort may impact others. This kind of temptation often leads people to lose track of the importance of connections with others and our reliance on each other to create a common good. It can lead us to focus on our rights without considering our responsibilities. We are often tempted to maintain our own comforts and patterns regardless of the impact that such actions might have on others, especially when they are others that we don't see others that we don't interact with. We are all facing that kind of temptation today. In Ukraine, we've seen a nation and a world experiencing a wilderness time. They are under attack by a belligerent neighbor, bent on their destruction and subjugation and yet they have relied on an inner strength to survive that wilderness as best as possible. In response, our nation and many others have enacted sanctions that are designed to put pressure on Russia to end what they are doing. And they seem to be having an impact. But it will likely not be long before some will cry out that those actions are hurting us as well. And there will be a temptation to end the sanctions, to pull back from efforts to put the aggressor towards peace so that our own lives remain comfortable. When that happens, we will face a temptation to act in a way that makes our own lives easier, less expensive. But what will that cost others? Will we have the inner strength to decide that it is more important to act for the good of others than to seek our own comfort? I do not know the answer, but in this time of Lent, this time of challenge to world peace. This is something to reflect on, to pray on, to consider how faithful we are to seeking God's kingdom for all, especially when that might decrease our own comfort. Lent is meant to be a time for reflection on our lives and our relationships with God and with God's children. This reading appears today and reminds us of these concepts of wilderness and temptation that challenge us more than we realize and create the need to discern how to respond through our faith. May the unique challenges we face this year lead us all into this Lenten time of prayer and reflection as we deal with temptations, times of confusion, and anything that challenges our faith. Amen. I ask you to take a moment and begin in prayer as we hear today's prayer song, Nothing Can Trouble, Nada De Tobe.
just gather our hearts in a moment of silent prayer to raise your concerns and your joys before God. God of grace, we give you thanks for these moments to gather in worship and prayer in the midst of our lives, to take a place of sanctuary even in our own homes. We thank you for your people gathered here and throughout the earth. Help us to remember that we are the body of Christ, the hands and feet of Jesus in this world. Help us in this season of Lent to take up that call and to live faithful in all the ways that Jesus lived faithfully, even in the face of temptation and challenge. We thank you today for those who have modeled faithfulness and courage for us. And we pray that you would strengthen us to be signs of your light and to be models of faith for others. We pray for our world, broken in so many ways, with hope that your spirit of wholeness, of healing, of listening and of love might break forth in unexpected ways, that people might care for one another in the most difficult places and even in the smallest ways, that surprising new solutions might come forward. We pray especially today for people of Ukraine, for families that are uprooted, that are separated from one another, for mothers caring for babies or even giving birth in bomb shelters, for situations that we can barely imagine and yet our hearts know what danger and separation must feel like. Strengthen those who go to help and aid, and strengthen us to help others in whatever small ways that we can. We join our hearts as well for those who are near to us, remembering always friends who are facing health challenges or life stresses. We pray today for Al and Fran and for Al's ongoing healing, for Ginny who is facing a surgery this week, for Dottie in her journey of health and living challenges. We pray for Pat in rehab and her continuing strengthening and healing. For Nancy, who is also in rehab, and for the friends and family who gather around them. We pray for Jeannie that you would continue to heal and strengthen her day by day. For friends who are in situations where they are in care facilities or confined to home, we pray for Eric, for Jane and June and Norma. We join our hearts in prayer for Sarah, and for Paul and Maxine facing some challenges, for Dick and Anne as they prepare to move, for any others that we hold in our hearts in these moments. And in these days of Lent, O oh God, help us in every day to find the moments of peace and of silence, to seek your presence and to be present to one another. For we would live in the way of the Christ who calls us, who sends us, and who has taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is a reminder once again for these days of Lent. Take time to be holy. taken the time to be with us this morning. And so as you go from wherever you may be into the world, always remember to take time to be holy, to take time to pray on difficult subjects, to realize that the wilderness is more than a place filled with animals but can be a place we find in ourselves. And yet, as we go, we can know that God is with us, that Christ has come before us and shown us the way, and that the Holy Spirit is alongside of us, ready to fill us and take us forward in faith and as part of God's kingdom. Amen.